So, we watched an anime, and we're going to review it, and before we get into that, we need to point out that Akagi and Kaiji are not the same thing. Right, so who's the creator of this? What's the guy's name? Oh, God, I don't remember. Go to Wikipedia. Bring so, this is a person who made these manga, and this anime based on two of these mangas, uh, and or three, maybe three. Uh, anyway, three. So... First, they made one. I forget what it's called because <laughs> no one's ever talks about it. Yep. But there was a spinoff of this manga they created. It was, it was a manga about Mahjong. There was a spinoff called Akagi, which is also about Mahjong. And that Akagi became an anime. And that's when I first heard of it because I saw this Akagi Mahjong anime. Then there was a s brand new thing unrelated to the first things called Kaiji, which I confused with Akagi, but I knew that it was related because it had the same exact art style. It was clearly by the same creator. The animes and the mangas look the same. I thought it was also about Mahjong. It's not. Kaiji is about gambling in general and not just about Mahjong. Yep. And because I vaguely knew that like Akagi was a spinoff or something and... <laughs> we got these things confused until just now. Yep. Point and apparently is, most of the internet also confuses and conflates them from what I can tell. Right. Anyway, there was a spinoff of Kaiji that we judged uh, last season on Judge Anime by its cover called Tonegawa Middle Manager whatever. So yep. There's a lot of different English titles for it. The Chronicles of Middle right. Manager Tonegawa, Middle Management Blues. Right. So here's the deal. In Kaiji, from I've never watched Kaiji, but... In Middle Manager, they give you basically summaries of what happened in Kaiji, so you can sort of figure out what the deal is. It seems like what happened in Kaiji is as an evil company, right? Yep. And the boss of this evil company was the most evil head boss person. And he's bored. And he's bored, so he got his employees to create this ridiculous gambling game of death. And Kaiji, the main character of Kaiji, got involved in this horrible gambling game of death. And that game existed to entertain the big evil guy in charge of the company. Yep, and like the second boss, like the sub boss of the show, was this Tonegawa guy who was like right. the second in he was command. The second in command was this guy named Tonegawa, who did most of the work setting up this evil game of death. So, what is Tonegawa's middle manager? It's a completely separate anime that shows you how. Tonegawa, the middle manager, second in command of the evil company, whose boss is the head boss. Uh, he's basically the vice president. Ton yep. Tonegawa is the vice president. It shows you how this. It, the, the main character is the second in command guy. It shows you the story of how he created the game of death, which I presume is the main plot of Kaiji itself. And it's literally like. He's thinking about going to golf, and he's like a middle manager, like doing HR paperwork or whatever. And then the big boss is like, yeah, I need you to make a game of death for me. <laughs> so it ruins his weekend and his job, like he gets a team together. And it's literally just like board meetings and HR shit and like, how do I put this together? Uh, and Office let's... jokes like Dilbert. <laughs> yup. But at the same time, like... Even though he's also a bad guy, he's also terrified of his insane boss. Yep. But he's also trying to keep his, you know, the the people below him under control. But he's right? also trying to be like he's trying to be like good manager. Right. He's he's trying. He's, he's like you know his boss is a crazy bad evil dude who everyone's scared of. Right. But he isn't sh like trying to learn the names of all his subordinates so that he can gain their loyalties. So that, that bit was hard. actually really funny. And they all have names that like are too similar to each other, and yep. he's going crazy. But he's also trying hard to actually remember them <laughs> and gain their trust but you know it's like they hate him they like him he's trying to make you know he takes them to a barbecue to try to make them like him <laughs> so, that they'll, so that they'll come up with good ideas he accepts all their ideas but then when the boss comes in he has to you know berate them all now it's pretty funny and i watched a bunch of it we're not gonna finish i it. only watched like three episodes i watched like seven but basically it's pretty funny. Like, it's worth watching a few episodes, especially, like, the first couple. When he's trying to learn everyone's names, it's actually really funny. That's the funniest part. Uh, but as the as it goes on, I guess the problem is you don't actually have need to see Akagi. Kaiji. A Akagi. Kaiji. At all. Right. It, it gives you these flashbacks and summaries of what happened in Kaiji. In, like, excruciating detail. Like, literally, the, the beginning of the first episode is, like, this very long summary of what happened in Kaiji. At least I assume, I don't know if there are other things happened in Kaiji that they're not summarizing because I didn't watch Kaiji. Yeah. But I feel like I don't need to watch Kaiji now because I got a cliff notes of it, right? Yep, because it, it spoils stuff. Like, it right. tells you what happens to him right. in the end. But on the other hand, 
uh, I don't. It, even though it summarized the events of Kaiji, I don't care about Kaiji or the events of Kaiji. So, so many of the jokes are referencing or basically tied to the story of Kaiji that it's like, oh, here's how they came up with that particular game of death that happened in Kaiji. It's like, yep. well, I don't care about Kaiji because I, maybe if I had seen Kaiji, it would be funnier. Oh my God, the scene when they're, that's the other really good scene in the early episodes where they're, they're workshopping like high level ideas for games of death. And one of the guys is like, what do you say? Something like, what if we make them play poker, but they're betting their own blood? <laughs> and that was actually a really good idea. Yeah, right? <laughs> anyway, the point is, if think if you've seen Kaiji and like Kaiji, a lot of the jokes in this show will hit harder. I, you don't have to have seen Kaiji to watch this show, but I think you will because you care less, it will be less funny and yep. there'll be less tying you to it. Now, in one way, the concept is really solid. Take a Not really a deconstruction, but take... Any of those anime that have an evil organization with lots and lots of faceless goons that's like always ever present and hyper organized and the, and look at it from the back and explore how would you organize like these thousands of goons to be the bad guys in the anime? Right. It's like usually when you watch a typical you know uh, show, right? That's an action show, or whatever, yep. where there's good guys and bad guys. You see the mostly focusing on the good guys. And a few scenes of the bad guys so that you know what they're up to. A but like bit, right? the thousands of just faceless dudes in sunglasses who get shot in noir. Right. <laughs> like, it's like who who organized watching, them? What if you're who watching pays them? Thundercats, but they show but it was mostly what are the mutants up to when the Thundercats are just dicking around and yep. no, no, there's not a fight going on. That's one thing He Man did well. He Man spent equal time on Skeletor. A little, right? But imagine if the show was just like, you know, Skeletor on all, all the days when they're not fighting with He Man. Yeah. And he's like preparing to fight, you know. All what? The, eh, what? <laughs> you know, like Starscream just, you know, chilling with some Energon cubes or whatever. And I really like that concept. And the show pulls it off okay. But there's a fundamental problem that makes, like, there's a poor par aspect of the execution in that it'll make really good jokes, but then it'll go way out of its way to explain the joke, to make sure you got the joke, to double reinforce what the joke is referencing. And it, like, it almost, the jokes are funny, but it, spend, it, it really brings them out too much and just drags everything out too far. Right, and that funny joke about the, the getting, trying to memorize the names of all the employees, it's like, that goes on for like minutes. It's like, it was funny, and now why are you still... It's like someone just keeps telling the joke, like, hey, why the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? To get to the other side, get it? And I guess Why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? You get I, it? And on you one hand... It? It's, why did you cross for like two minutes? Someone just keeps going on. Yep. It's like it was funny the first time, but why are you still telling the joke again? Now, on one hand, it's clearly parodying the style of Kaiji. Like, it'll cut to someone who's thinking, like, well, if I do this, then he'll do that. So therefore, Lo I lots must. of internal monologue, which is good. Yep, I like but that. A bit of, you know, it's just the timing of it. Well, things that's it. Are, things are stretched out too long. Right, and there the, is zero the, the, comedic timing. The timing of the comedy is just wrong. It's like the it's content like the joke the... is perfectly good, and it's just there's no timing whatsoever. Yep, it's like the literal opposite of Niji Joe, where the jokes are very simple or absurdist, or often completely nonsensical, but the comedic timing of Niji Joe is so perfect. And this completely fails to execute at any point on the timing and cadence of a joke. Only the content of the joke is conveyed. Mm -hmm. And that's the fundamental flaw of this. And I feel like it's a common problem in almost all of these parody anime that I've seen. I feel like what the show like the would have been North way Star better. Like the Fist of the North Star parody. The show would have been way better if it was the, a short show. Like a, Devil like Man a, like parody. Like a Domingo Dobutsu. Yeah. And they were forced to squish it. Because they're trying to fill this full episode length, I think that's the reason that I don't I think it feels like they didn't have enough material to work with. They had to stretch it out. Yeah. Or they could have just crammed two episodes into one and, and told more stuff. Yeah. Uh, that could have worked also. But or they could have, or you know what they could have done too, is if they'd aimed it at the audience of people who have already seen Kaiji and are fans of well, it. Well, I think they did, but they, it's like they aimed it at them. But they tried to make it so that anyone could watch it. It's like they should have given up on the people who yep. haven't seen Kaiji. Because at least, so. like, remember that, like, mini, that Devilman parody thing that we watched a long time ago? Like, all those other weird parody anime, they tend to do the opposite, and they don't explain shit. 
Yeah, there was a, I think there was a Fist of the North Star like working in a grocery store one where they're yep. all chibi or something, and they didn't explain nothing. Which was fine, but even then... And those even as someone who's seen all of Fist of the North Star, I couldn't even watch it. Also, it wasn't funny. Yeah, well, that's the thing. That, that show... The content wasn't funny and the execution wasn't good. This show, the content is great mm -hmm. and the jokes are great. It's just the comedic timing falls so flat that it really kills the momentum mm -hmm. and it's hard to keep watching. You know, it, it is funny. What's the, the Chibi Lotus Wars one? Oh, the the uh, Lotus Island. Lotus Island. <laughs> that's also, uh, also Mini Pato, but there's not a lot of Mini Pato. Yeah, Mini Pato really relies on having seen Pat Labore, though. Yeah, it does. Like, if you haven't seen Pat Labore, you're just like, what? If you haven't seen Pat Labore, why, why would you even think about watching? Middleman, <laughs> when you can go watch Pat Labor, which is itself has a lot of comedy in it, even yep. though it is not a comedy primarily. But I guess what I would say, I'd recommend watching one episode of this, partly because then you'll see what the deal is, and you'll see like kind of what the deal is with Kaiji, and it'll tell you if you like either or both. I would recommend watching Kaiji. See if it's see if it's a thing you like. Watch one or two episodes of it. If uh -huh. it is good, if not, then don't watch anything. Ever, don't watch any of it ever again. But if you do like Kaiji, well, you can finish watching Kaiji, and then if you need some humor that will probably you know be not be as lost on you, you can then watch the middle manager and maybe even watch Akagi or who knows what. Anyway, anything else created by what's the person's name? Oh, I didn't even pull it up. You didn't pull it up. Nah. The, I mean, I'll look it up because we should, you know, give credit to the the oh, person. Oh, Paul Chapman wrote the article I got up here. Okay. Let me get the person's name. Uh, Nobuyuki Fukumoto. That's mm -hmm. the person who wrote. Wow, lots of stuff. Uh, but it seems a lot of it is uh. Gambling Apocalypse Kaiji, Gambling Maverick Chronicle Kaiji, Gambling Advent Chronicle Kaiji, Gambling <laughs> Advent Chronicle Kaiji Kazuya arc. <laughs> yeah, okay. A, a, a very prolific uh, gambling manga writer.